Welcome back everybody, this is Exploration Overland and this is going to be the final video on the installation of the suspension on the Jeep. Stay tuned guys. Is right I have completely finished this installation on my own in my garage of this suspension lift guys and it was an absolute blast but before I get into some of the specifics my thoughts on the whole thing and how it went let me take you back to the garage and show you just kind of what I was doing over the past few days all right guys we are in the process of working on the lift for the Jeep we have gotten the track bar disconnected we have pulled out the shocks the springs the axle is kind of floating right now. I got jack stands under it to protect it. But we undid the plugs for both the transfer case, the breather valve on the axle, the sensor for the axle. We've got all that taken off. <clears throat> now when I say taken off, they're just disconnected from the axle because I had to be able to lower the axle low enough to pull out the springs. Next, we got to remove the bump stops. And then there's one other thing. What was it that I did? Oh, and you had to remove the brackets for the brake lines off of the control arms. So that is where we are at at the moment. It's a great little process. Things were going a little slow at first, but now they're picking up, which is nice. Guys, so let me scoot back here. We've got the shocks on there, and we got the new springs and the bump stops. Now the bump stops took a little ingenuity to get them to press up in there because it was a little difficult. And then if you look right here, this is a two-inch... Basically, it's the bumper for the bump stop, so that's what'll hit that on the f on the spring here, which they're labeled right and left. And there is the shock. Right now, it's on its softest setting, but you do have to cut a hole here for this to go through. And I did have to cut this out so I could access this and the bolt, because with the shock in there, the bolt did not want to sit nicely. It takes a lot of fidgeting to get it in there. But once it's in there, it's great, but you can't... The plastic gets caught up around the bolt and you can't pull it loose unless you wanted to rip it all out, but I wasn't going to. But And it gives me more access to everything. But so far, but so far this has been fairly straightforward for the most part. There's been some little hiccups here and there, like for instance, on the bumper for the bump stop. The bolt they give you, you know, the help lengthen it because you can adjust the height of the bump stop based on the size of your tire. So the bolt's there to, it's long enough to accommodate for all the different changes. But the bolt is a hex key bolt, like opening for it to tighten it. And you have this little wrench to shove up under there to try and tighten the nut underneath. It took some ingenuity because I don't have a little like hex key thing to go on the ratchet. I don't know if I had one, if I had some of those straight wrench, the ratcheting wrenches, it probably would have been a little bit easier, but in the end I got it tightened down to what it needs to be and everything's torqued up. So now we are going on to fixing the track bar, getting that all mounted back up, and then hooking up the hose line, or the hose lines, the brake lines, um, to their new little brackets, and then the front will be done. I'm excited, except for maybe the track bar, like I said, I still have to wait for that drill bit, but... That shouldn't be anything, but so far, guys, it's going really well. Okay, guys, so a lot of the footage that I shot of the rear of the Jeep got corrupted when I was trying to upload it to my computer. So here are just some photos of the work that I was doing when I did the rear. So, it was quite a bit of work. Don't get me wrong. Now, I didn't film every little piece by piece. I just kind of gave you guys the updates, as you saw, of how it went. Because, honestly, trying to get the camera in small spots and my hands and the tools it just wasn't going to turn out well I tried the footage didn't look right and honestly if I had somebody filming for me and doing it it probably would have went way better but that's okay because that would have been a very boring video to have just watching me put a suspension on but in all guys 
this lift was fairly straightforward and actually it was fairly easy to do. Now, it did take me much longer than the 10 and a half hours. It took me 15 hours in total over the course of about two and a half days. Uh, and that's because I worked about eight hour days or one eight hour day, another day was a little less because I completed something. And then it took a second day because I had to wait for a new drill bit to come in because I broke my old one. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but overall, installing this on my own on the floor was super simple. Now, I'm going to state that if you do not have four jack stands and a floor jack, do not try and do this at home on your own because you do have to raise the axle up and down and having four jack stands, because two sit under the body of the Jeep to keep it constantly lifted, and then the other ones you move under the axles. If you do not have those things, you're not gonna be able to do it as easily, I should say. You, you can do it, but it's not gonna be easy. But just for safety, guys, if you don't have those things, don't try and do that. But I'm not a mechanic, I'm not your mother, I'm not gonna tell you what you can and cannot do. <laughs> but it did take me 15 hours. Now, I did take my time, I didn't rush, and it went straight forward, guys. The instructions, the pictures, the clarity, all of it was super straightforward, minus the e-brake aspects for the rear. You do have to reroute the emergency brake on the rear of the Jeep, and trying to find some of those bolts on the rear axle of the Jeep was a little complicated, just because the, the picture on the image, on the instructions, was really clear but it wasn't a big picture it was like a small picture of the bolt or of the bracket and it didn't exactly say where on the axle it was so it took me a hot second to find some of them but once i found them it was super straightforward and the most difficult part of the rear was rerouting the emergency brakes because the cable didn't want to move as you can tell a lot of the things are with the rear of the jeep that were the most complicated the front was super straightforward the back was really straightforward you just had to reroute those also with the back you need spring compressors. If you're doing this with jack stands and a floor jack, go to AutoZone, not a sponsor of the channel, go there, rent a spring compressor, and compress those springs down because you cannot, at least for me, with my jack stands I had and my floor jack, I could not get the body of the Jeep high enough because the jack stands were at their fullest extent and I could not lower the axle low enough because it was as low as the floor jack could go to slide the springs up in there nicely. I did have to run a spring compressor, compress them down. It took all of 30 minutes, got them in there, and it was done. But it was something that I figured out along the way because the instructions, though they say it's on the floor, if you have a lift, you can easily lower the axle low enough to throw those things up in there. But on the floor, I had to have those. But that was it. That was the only specialty tool I had to have for this whole installation was going to rent one of those. Otherwise, I did everything with simple tools, torque wrench, everything, and a new drill bit. Make sure you have some really good steel drill bits to drill out your four holes that you need for the traction bar mounts, because if you don't, it takes a very long time and you may run the issue of breaking it like I did. But my old bit was old, so it's okay. Now, my thoughts as you as I kind of stated, it was super simple. Overall though, I enjoyed installing this. It was super straightforward, easy, and I didn't get hurt in the process of this. There was no complicating things. There were no surprises. It was literally, I unbolted things, pulled off old parts, put on the new parts, buttoned it all up, and on I went. And it, since I have done that, guys, it is great. Now, the ride quality has been fantastic. I have not wheeled it on the trail yet, just because I finished it last week. It's a brand new week, so I will try and get out on the trail to test it and tell you guys how it goes later on. But so far on the road, guys, and on some of the county roads I've been on, this thing rides amazing. It feels just like stock in handling, like it feels just like stock, except for the new steering stabilizer. You can definitely tell that's working with the 35s. It is keeping it stable. I no longer have any kind of death wobble or rumbling as I'm going along. Also, if you're hearing a noise, our new family member, Taro, is down here. He's hanging out with me today. He wanted to come. So, he's kind of sniffing around, enjoying life. He's enjoying looking at all the new birds and geese and things out here by the lake. But it has ride, been riding like a dream, guys. It is way more comfortable, especially on the county roads so far. 
I don't feel the bumps as much, things like that is just nice. And like I said, it handles just like stock. Now, the suspension's in the softest settings. I will say that. I have only driven this in the softest settings because the Jeep is not under load. I don't have all my gear in here. I haven't gone on any trips. I haven't done anything yet. So I left it in the softest settings. And so far, I have not felt the need to change it. Just like this. Now, once I start loading it down, we can make easy changes. That's why they're the quick adjustable. I can get under there, flip the switch, you know, stiffen it up if I need to. But at the moment, they're in their softest settings. It feels great. So what I recommend this lift for people to do, like I said, if you have simple tools, have the ability to get a spring compressor and you have floor jacks and, or have a floor jack and jack stands, guys, 100% you can do this on your own without any help. It is super simple to do and easy. Otherwise, you can also take this to a shop and they'll be able to crank this out and get it done just as easily as well. Well, thank you guys for joining me out here today. I am very excited to wheel this thing and see what it looks like and how it feels on the trail. This is going to be really nice to have that three and a half inches, guys. I have way more I have I have way more ground clearance than I did before. So now some of those trails that I shied away from because I was either getting hung up on the belly of the Jeep or because I knew that I could not get it through there. It's game on. I am really excited to see what I can do with this thing over the course of this next year. Now, coming up here on the future of the channel, stay tuned for some of my other videos. They're going to be coming quick, fast, and in a hurry for the rest of the year. And then next year starts the adventuring. Like I said, we are going to get deep into the weeds here, guys, of getting out there on those backcountry discovery routes and seeing just one how tough they are how much fun they can be, and just what we can find along the way. It's going to be an absolute blast, and I'm almost done with my recovery, the big bulk of my recovery for my knee, so I am really excited. But thank you all for joining me. Guys, a list of parts that I have on the Jeep are in the description below. If you haven't checked out any of my other videos, go ahead, check them out. I got quite a few videos, guys. They're not half bad. I'm still getting better little by little as we go. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. I am so close to my goal of a 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We are getting very close. I'm super excited, but don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys. Give me a like, and I'll catch you all next time.